um, Pine Street, in the back of Pine Street. So if you ever make it over to Pine Street, we have an office over there. Um, but we have a couple of staff in Indy and then a couple people um, outside of Indy. So we're a fully remote team, uh, which is nice. So just a little bit more about AND marketing really quickly. Um, we are a marketing um, firm that offers outsourced marketing resources for people. Um, we focus on uh, business and marketing strategy, business intelligence and analytics, uh, storytelling and branding, which you'll learn a little bit more about today, and marketing planning and execution, which we'll also talk about a little bit more today. So um, that's really the quick elevator speech. We're intended for small and growing businesses that want to um, grow, their, grow their business through marketing. Um, and so we offer a number of services. Uh, I am Amanda Cook, and I am a marketing director for AND Marketing. I have um, about 16 years experience in marketing for B2B, B2C, and nonprofit companies. So um, I've been doing this for a little bit of a long time. <laughs> um, so I mainly focus on client management for our clients that we have here in Indianapolis, um, and a few that are actually um, US-based as well. So um, I'll be speaking today, but I'm going to also turn it over to Beth to talk a little bit about um, what Beth does for us. Hi, I'm Beth McDonough. I'm content manager at Ann Marketing. Um, I've been with the company since January of 2018. Um, I head up all of the copywriting, storytelling, um, blog, email, social media, end of things. And um, my background previous to joining in marketing was more of um, freelance writing and uh, academic writing. And so I'm an English and word nerd that added marketing into the, into the fray later on. So I'm really excited to be here and talk to you guys about content. Um, I'll pass it to Matt. Hi everybody, my name is Matt Vincent. So I am the creative director at Ann Marketing. So I handle a lot of the uh, visual components and, and you know, partner a lot with Beth on making sure that our clients, you know, words and visuals come together to tell a cohesive story that engages with their audience. And so I've been a graphic designer for a little over 70 years and have been with Ann Marketing since February of 2018. So Beth's got a month on me there as far as time with Ann Marketing. All right, thanks, Matt. Um, you know, we're not going to force anybody to talk today, but um, we would like to get a good feel of people who are on the call. So if you want to just go around and introduce yourself, tell us what company you're from, and maybe tell us a little bit more about what ch current challenges you might have. Um, and then that way we can kind of tailor our conversation a little bit more um, to be more helpful to you. So um, if anybody else wants to take the floor and kick it off for us, that would be great. We'd love to learn more about you. I'll just be the brave one and go first. <laughs> uh, my name is Leanne Balta. I am a realtor for Century 21. And um, I can say I'm pretty happy with their marketing team and the flexibility that we have. Um, and for me, our jobs are all about marketing. So it's just staying on top of it. Thanks, Leanne. I can go. Cool. Um, this is Jennifer Smith. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I'm the Director of Client Engagement at DK Pierce and Associates. Um, and I guess our we don't necessarily have a formal marketing department or anything like that. We're kind of small, so just um, we're going to be celebrating 20 years this year. So I want to use that kind of as a platform to officially kind of launch some more formal marketing than what we, and what, you know, kind of expand upon what we're already doing. Yes! Thanks, Jennifer. Um, I'll just piggyback on Jennifer since I'm also from DK Pierce. This is Katie Walker. I'm the admin and I'm going to assist Jennifer in some of our revamping of our social media presence. Great. Thanks, Katie. I can go next. 
My name is Carly. Um, I work with North Park Community Credit Union. I'm our business development officer and as of today, <laughs> I am also focusing on our marketing strategies as well. So I have no marketing experience. I uh, worked in advertisement for a little while. So I'm kind of going and I'm winging it. So I really hope I learn a lot today. <laughs> Good. Well, we hope we can be helpful. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Chastity Neckers. I work at the Boone County Economic Development Corporation as the Director of Marketing and Communications. Um, and I've actually worked with Ann Marketing at my previous job. So, hi, hi Chastity. Hi. How are you? Good. Welcome to your new job. Yeah, what a fun time to be in communications. Yeah. My name is Jacqueline Terrell. I'm with Aspire Indiana. I'm a care coordinator. And whereas I'm not in marketing, I still would like to know some strategies. Thank you. Great, thank you. And I'm Pam Verberg. I'm the executive director at the Arc of Greater Boone County. Um, for us, it's just making sure we are getting communications out to everybody. We have all of the people we serve, as well as our staff, um, spread out very far and much more so than normal. So keeping those communications fresh and um, meaningful to people is one of our key challenges right now. Great, thank you. Hi, I'm Liz Ezra and my husband and I own Cobblestone in Zionsville. And I actually missed the first part because I'm the only one here. So I had to run get a delivery. So I'm gonna probably have to pop in and out, I apologize for that. Uh, but um, marketing is obviously very important to us right now as um, our business model is continually changing since this has happened. So it's very important for us to be on top of everything. Great, thanks Liz. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Krista Shields, I'm with Boone RMC. I'm our marketing and communication specialist. And I think one of the challenges for me right now is we just have a lot of different messages to get out there and some of them are not super popular. <laughs> so just learning how best to package those and, um, you know, keep our brand strong while, you know, communicating some things that may not, uh, I guess, they don't, they aren't for everyone. And that's one of the things that I really struggle with is that some of the messages that I have to get out don't pertain to, to all of our members. So that's hard. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Krista. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm Ross Hessel, uh, Business Development Manager for Spherion Staffing. I focus on Boone and Hamilton counties um, and a little bit into Marion County as well. But um, being in sales, like everybody's kind of saying, uh, trying to get creative right now and, and get our, our message out there that we can help and um, just going through different marketing strategies. Great, thanks Ross. I'm, I'm Matt Wilson. I'm the executive director of the Boone County Mentoring Partnership. Uh, we do one-to-one -one community based mentoring uh, and it's, we, we've had to change how we do that. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, our, what we do is not meeting a quote unquote immediate basic need um, but as this goes on, it, there's, uh, we see the value of social connection and relationships and then, um, and also the, our, our mentors could be some of those frontline people to, uh, uh, help keep an eye out for abuse. And mm -hmm. we don't want the, we don't want the kids to lose that connection. Um, we are. Uh, we have a college student who's coming in to to do to intern for us this summer, and she's uh, she's going to be helping out with the social media and helping us get those stories out because we do have a lot of stories. We it's just I'm not a social media genius by any means, so. Sure. And who is your special friend um, that is behind you? Yeah, somebody's yeah, tired back there. <laughs> it, it's a picture. Um, that's our that's our dog who came to visit us at my office uh, about a week ago. So I took the picture. He was pretty worn out from a walk, so. 
Anyone else? Did we get everybody? All right. Um, we want to make sure that we uh, be mindful of everybody's time today so we can go ahead and get started with our presentation. Thank you so much for um, you know, letting us know who all is on today and how we can tailor some things to you guys. Um, we're going to touch on a few areas today um, and know that we're, because of time, it's kind of probably going to be touching on just the tip of the iceberg for a lot of things. Um, and we know that a lot of people don't like marketing jargon. We're, we try to stay away from that as much as possible. So if we are talking about anything throughout today or anything that you don't understand or need a little bit more guidance on, please feel free to interrupt us. We want to be, you know, make sure that this discussion is interactive and you can ask questions. Um, like I said, we'll try to stay away from that jargon as much as possible and explain things as much as possible. So please feel free to interrupt. I know that um, a lot of you seem to have a lot of similar challenges, but, um, and so hopefully maybe someone's solution can also help you. Um, so please feel free to share throughout today. Um, with that, uh, we're gonna talk about understanding your customer, what their pain points are and how to uniquely position yourselves to solve it. Um, this is an ever evolving thing right now um, because I think nobody really knows um, what the next step is going to be. So we'll touch on that. We'll touch on how to reach your customers, um, getting that messaging out the free way, and there's also a paid way. Um, and so we'll touch on uh, both of those activities. And then we'll hit website because we know that website's really your, your digital business card, your digital calling card that you are able to connect with uh, people with right now. So we'll touch on websites and website behaviors um, throughout. And then with time willing, we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So uh, again, please interrupt at any time, ask questions. We're happy to stop and, and answer those. All right, we'll jump right into it. I think Beth or Matt? I think Matt's gonna take this. Okay. Yeah, so um, I also wanted to echo what Amanda said. I know you guys have a lot of you know unique uh, problems or some overlaps between everything that you guys are going through. So as you see that outline of what our, you know, talking points are on for this presentation and you have specific questions, feel free to throw those up in the chat and we'll all kind of take turns here at Ann Marketing's monitoring those and, you know, bringing them up towards the end of each section so that we can answer those for you. You know, I didn't hear anybody specifically say website as they walk through. So if that's one that, you know, you don't have a pertinent question to or something, we can for the sake of time, you know, move past that to be able to answer more questions and, and help you guys. We want to maximize giving you things to walk away with and be able to do so you feel uh, empowered at the end of this. So the first thing that we want to talk about, and this came up a lot as you guys shared, was messaging. How am I going to craft that message to the audience that, you know, I'm speaking to, whether it's customer, employees, things like that. And what we found is there's a book by Donald Miller called Building a Story Brand, and I highly recommend uh, that you read it. My favorite thing about it is for non-marketing people, which, you know, before working for Ann Marketing, I wouldn't consider myself to be super marketing savvy. It really helps uh, work on, you know, understanding the aspects of marketing and communication without being overloaded with a bunch of jargon. So it's a very... Uh, easy and, and sort of user-friendly uh, read on what it's like to craft a, craft a story. So the way that we uh, walk through this, and this is an outline from the story brand, is this is the classic sort of hero's journey. Um, it is the journey that your audience, that your employees, uh, coworkers, things like that, it's a journey that everybody's on and everybody can relate to. And so you know, for your position as a, you know, as a business, it's important to see where you are in this stage of the journey and where your, you know, customer is, you know, your employee. So that audience is always going to be the primary focus. And that's why we start with a character. And so, you know, you need to make sure that your messaging is customer centric, employee centric, that you are, um, you know, making sure that you focus on them. And the thing that you're going to focus on is what their problem is. So as you understand the character of the story, 
you're going to look at their external problems. So those are the surface ones that are usually really easy to identify. Then you're going to look at their internal problems. That's the thing that goes deeper. It's that underlying issue or thing that keeps them up at night and will actually be the primary place from which they make you know, a decision to purchase or is gonna sort of motivate them to continue to move forward. And then there's the philosophical. So that's sort of the bedrock of you know, where they're operating, where they're coming from. Something in relation to this problem that they believe should or shouldn't be true about the world. And so if your messaging can simultaneously speak to the external, the internal, and the philosophical, you're gonna see a lot more engagement and response and relationship built with that primary audience that you're speaking to. Now, this third point is where you guys come into play and meets a guide. And this is probably the biggest messaging shift for a lot of people first hearing this, is that there, you guys uh, are not the hero of the story and you aren't the focus of the story. And I know that sort of you know, maybe breaks a lot of um, pre-established norms of talking first about your business, what it is that you do, what you provide, you actually need to lay the groundwork of saying, I know where my audience is coming from first, and then put yourself into the position as the guide coming alongside. And the two key things to do that are to communicate empathy. So to that audience saying, I understand what you're going through, and then to be able to position yourself as someone in you know, authority or with experience to be able to, to uniquely speak to solving that multi-layered problem. And so, you know, when we talk about it in the context of a website, that can be providing testimonials, you know, other people that you've taken through this journey that can say, yes, what they said they could do, they actually were able to do for me, you know, and this can also be certifications, things that, you know, experience that you have, years of experience, the sort of experience of people on your team those are important things to share as you're the guide. And one other thing I'll say to that is that as that sort of a paradigm shift, moving yourself from the hero to the guide, the guide is actually the better position to be in to begin with. If you think through any classic stories where you have sort of a, you know, a hero starting out in their journey, they start from a position of inexperience. They have some sort of problem that they don't know yet how to solve, like Luke Skywalker, we'll use Star Wars in as, as an example. And then a character like Obi-Wan Kenobi, who's been a Jedi, who's been through, you know, countless battles, things like that. It's actually a position of experience and, and authority to come alongside and help. And that's ultimately where you guys are in your businesses. Then you need to be able to provide a plan. And so we usually break this down as like no more than three to four steps of how they could begin to, you know, do business with you, how you would in three to four steps help them begin to work through their problem. And once you've established that plan, you need to clearly call them to action. You know, this is sort of, in, in other terms, people might say asking for the sale. We like to think of it as a primary call to action first. And Donald Miller talks about it as like, this is your proposal, you know, it's the buy, it's this, you know, it's, will you marry me? And it's a big ask, you know? Uh, so you want to make sure that you're, you're always asking that, but that we also provide a transitional call to action. And what that is, is will you go on a date? So if you propose to that audience and say, will you marry me? And they say, no, do you have a piece of content or another way, sort of a low risk way that your audience can continue to engage and to interact with your brand or your business? And once they've engaged or interacted with that transitional call to action, you need to follow up again with, and will you marry me? And if they still say, no, I'm not willing to marry you yet, then you have to have another transitional piece of content or way to interact with you. And you just keep going back and forth between those two. Always asking, will you marry me? And then saying, if not, please go on a date with me. And that's what we kind of, you know, in more detail would talk about a sales funnel where you keep moving them and building that relationship to the point where trust is established and they will want to, you know, quote unquote, marry you. And towards the end of this, the way that you're gonna sort of, you know, provide a holistic you know, story for them or narrative is you need to paint a picture of what it looks like to you know, have a happy ending. How is you know, your product or service gonna help their story end in success? And while this might be uncomfortable, the second point that helps them avoid failure is also really critical. They need to, you need to be able to you know, visualize for them 
what it looks like to have success with the problem or you know the solution that you're providing but also if they decide not to to go with that solution what is that going to look like and so you want to make sure that you have more happy ending emphasis than tragedy but it still needs to exist because if there's no stakes there's no catalyst to make a decision you know and we've got a link out over here to the right that we've break, broken this framework out in some more detail and have some really uh, good questions for you guys to think through. And that could help you get started, you know, doing this like after this call, even if you wanted to. So that's the story brand framework by Donald Miller. It's one that we really believe in. And we found that it helps not only create greater engagement with your audience or the person that you're creating messaging for, but it even helps bring alignment within your own team to say, oh, wow, okay, this is what we do. And this is the way that we should always structure our content to speak to our audience. So are there any questions about this section? All right, thanks, Matt. Um, before we go on, I do want to, uh, we, I should have mentioned this at the start, that we will make this deck available to you so you don't have to worry about taking too many notes throughout this. Um, so again, and you can ask questions in the chat box if you'd like as well, um, or put them or just you know, ask them as we're talking, but um, you will have access to this uh, following the, the webinar. Thanks, Matt. Um, let's see, there we go. Beth, do you want to take over? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so you've you've done all of the super hard work of figuring your story out. So you know who your hero is. You know what your villain is. Um, you've positioned yourself as as a guide. You have this perfect story and perfect flow, and maybe this beautiful website. And now nobody's coming to see it. Um, and so with, with websites and content and um, online presence in general, it is, we're not in an if you build it, they will automatically come uh, state. And so when you build it, you have to do certain things to get them to come and to see what you have to offer and to learn how they can trust you as their guide. Um, so one of the first things that you need to do to uh, get your message across and get people to actually come to your website is to build optimized copy on your website that reflects your brand story in a clear and concise way. Um, so you wanna make sure your messaging is really tight. And Donald Miller talks a lot about how um, when people go onto a website, they don't wanna to have to burn a lot of calories, uh, mental calories to understand what you offer and how you can help them. So um, fewer words is always better, um, clear message, and make sure that the, the writing and the messaging that's on your website is keyword infused, or um, if you know the words, I, I don't want to get too jargony, but SEO or optimize. So basically those are the words that your hero are going to be typing into Google to try to find a solution to their problem. So you want to make sure that you have those words and those answers sprinkled in the right places on your website so that Google can start to learn who you are and learn that you are an authority on that topic and start to show up when people are searching for those things. Another way to do that is through a blog. Um, if you guys have websites, probably a lot of you have blogs already. Um, there are a few things that are super important with blog content. Number one is to refresh it often. So if even if you have four or five articles on there, you wanna keep producing new content. Uh, number one, because you wanna show your audience that they can trust you and that you don't have um, expired thoughts on something and that you're on the cutting edge and that you have knowledge so you can build that trust and build that empathy. And then the second reason why is because Google rewards um, websites that put new content out continuously because they also wanna be making sure that they're showing people the, the newest and the most authoritative content that's available. And you have so many options when it comes to providing blog content that will educate and inspire your audience, um, you can do listicles, you can do hot take reactions to news in your industry, researched academic articles, um, you can do interviews, anything within your space that you've determined that your hero wants to know or can learn from you. And then this is going to be um, a prime opportunity to make sure that you have those primary and transitional calls to action. So 
you, when you write a blog post, you always want to be leading your reader to do something at the end of it. So you have to figure out what makes sense for them to do next after they read an article of yours. Um, there's always going to be an option to, to buy now or the, that cash register button that's like, work with us, buy now, whatever the product or service you're offering is, that's the, will you marry me? And then um, you always want to offer them a secondary call to action if they're not ready to marry you yet. So maybe that's if you like this article, read this one that's about the subject you might also find interesting or join our email list to stay up to date or follow us on social media. Those are all uh, transitional dating calls to action to keep the person in a relationship with you as so that they don't just hop on your website, read your article, leave, and then never come back again. Um, I'm going to skip email and come back to it because I want to talk about social first. Um, a lot of you guys probably have social media accounts, at least on Facebook, maybe Twitter, maybe Pinterest, Instagram. Um, the algorithm is an incredibly difficult thing to get past when it comes to getting people to have their eyes on your social media. Um, one thing that's going to help improve that is to make sure that you're posting consistency, that you're switching it up, and that you're posting um, interactive content. So asking your audience questions, uh, put polls up, the more that people are engaging, liking, sharing, commenting on your posts, the more likely they are to keep seeing what you publish on social media. Um, and that's another date me tool that people are going to use to follow up with you and keep track of what you're doing. And then email, I wanted to highlight at the end because out of um, all of these elements, I think this is one of the most important because you it is email is the only distribution method where you can reach your audience directly without having to battle either an algorithm of a social media platform or trying to get and stay within Google's good graces so that they recommend you on their um, search result pages. Email people are willingly giving you their contact information and they are letting you send messages directly to them. So you always know that that's where your message is going to go straight to their inbox. Um, and that that shows a lot of trust that um, your audience or your hero has in you when they decide to give you your email, their email address. Um, and that's also a prime opportunity for you to then deliver them the, the content, the um, pages from your websites, your offerings, all of the stuff that builds that empathy and authority. Um, and so I wanna emphasize, do not be afraid to email your list because if they've signed up for your email list, they 100% want to hear from you. Um, and then I would just finish off by saying, there are a few tools, if this seems super overwhelming when it comes to publishing blogs, um, keeping track of social media, making sure that you have a calendar if you're trying to keep track of blog topics and sending out your emails. Um, you can do basic keyword research through a free tool called Ubersuggest. And then um, if you don't have an email service provider, you can use one like MailChimp. I believe it is free for up to 2000 email subscribers. And then if you want to schedule your social media ahead of time, um, there are several free options. One that we use pretty often is Buffer. So you can um, log your photos, your captions, your links up there um, and schedule it out a week, two weeks, three weeks ahead of time and use one spreadsheet or one calendar to keep all of your information together so that you're not um, showing up every single day and frantically trying to figure out how to get your message out there and how to, have to find the time to figure out what to post. That was a lot of information and I went through it kind of quickly because I want to make sure that people can ask specific questions if they have them. So if you have questions, please share them now. I have a question. Yeah. So in being in the business development part of things, I I wanted to see what happened when I Googled what our program is because it doesn't pull up independently on our website. It's something that we offer exclusively for the companies that work with us. And so we don't want everybody to be able to look at it and say, well, I want that. Well, you might not work for a company that's eligible. So um, I Googled it and it was definitely not us. It was like a college LGBTQ society. It was like the first three things that pop up. And I know that you can pay for that advertising. So would that be where they just keep things more up to date than we do? So they just pop up more relevant? Because I mean, it's, it's a college that's not even around here. 
Yeah, so if, if, if they pop up on the first page of Google, if they have the little word, it's, I just believe it just says ad right beside it, um, those are the people who are paying to have their page or their website show up first. Right. Um, if it does not have the word ad beside it, that means that they have done the keyword work and the SEO to get their content and their page to show up um, on the first page of Google. And so, and that is organic. So that's all, um, you don't have to pay for that if they're showing up organically. That's just the keyword work. Uh, okay, I gotcha. Okay, thank you. We also had another question come in um, from the audience. Is, does Facebook treat posts differently from Hootsuite? Um, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. <laughs> Does Facebook treat posts from Hootsuite differently from individual posts? Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're asking like, is your post gonna get the same amount of exposure if you're doing it through a scheduler rather than directly into Facebook? Um, I hate this answer, but it changes weekly. <laughs> um, it, it, it can, you're going to get a different answer depending on the whims of Facebook and what they, they decide to change that day. I would say to um, balance it if you can. So you can have your regularly automated posts and then also hop in there and, and post something like or um, one of the best ways to get a, a direct post onto Facebook is to share relevant content from somebody else in the moment. Um, but what matters more than where you're posting from, whether it's a schedule or directly onto Facebook is whether people are interacting with that post. So if you're doing something from a schedule, ask a question or do a poll or ask people to interact with you in some way, because anything that is that Facebook makes an attempt to bury is gonna, um, that's gonna be counteracted by anytime someone is commenting or liking your post. Cause they wanna show people what they wanna see. And that's the only way they can figure that out is if people are actually, actually interacting with you. Thanks, Beth. Um, I'm going to move on. So Beth talked about a couple of things about the uh, free way, and I'm going to talk about a couple of things with the paid way. And I say paid, and I know that budgets are constrained and limited um, a lot of times, and especially now. Um, so the good thing about most of these things is that you can spend as little or as much as you want on these things. So um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is um, Google ads and then paid social, which we just covered for a second SEO, we just covered and digital advertising. Um, so, you know, you've created this great content and you really want to get it out there. And so by this way, this is the way to amplify that content and get it into eyes that might not normally see it, who are not following you. Um, it's an opportunity to gain uh, new relationships, new customers, uh, new prospects and leads. Um, so the first one that I'm going to talk about is Google ads. And this is also known as pay per click or PPC. A lot of people refer to it as Google ads, but the um, PPC or the pay per click is the activity and Google ads is actually the platform. So there are a number of platforms. There's Google, there's Bing, people use Bing, there's Yahoo. Um, there's actually a number of very small search engines that still exist. So Google is not the, the only one doing this, but most people refer to it as Google Ads, and um, if I refer to Google Ads and PPC interchangeably, I'm sorry, just know that that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Um, unfortunately, no matter what you do, no matter where um, as the organic SEO that you work, do work that you do, you're probably never going to reach the very top spot of Google um, if your keywords are very common. Um, that's because you have big players like Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube that are always going to be at the top. So when you use Google ads, that's your opportunity to get to the top spot. You, you pay to get to the top. Um, and as Beth mentioned, you'll recognize this. And I actually recognize this even more now that I pay attention to it is that the, the, uh, search results at the top, you'll know it because it'll say ad in a little green box right next to the um, the headline. So you'll know that it's a paid ad and they know that they paid to get there. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, the first one that doesn't have one of those is your first organic search result. So that's the one that someone used with organic keywords. They have strong SEO. Those are the ones that got to the top for free. Um, so with uh, 
PPC that helps you get to the top. It helps more eyeballs on your information. Um, you bid on specific keywords and um, then you, sp you pick an audience that you want to get those. And then you, you decide what your budget is. It's a daily budget. The nice thing about that is that you only pay if someone actually clicks on your link. Um, the other nice thing is that it puts somebody directly into your site where you want them. So for example, if you sell widgets in, in Lebanon, and so someone sell, you know, is Googling widgets in Lebanon, they're gonna go directly to your site onto the page where you're actually selling widgets. And you can talk all about how you're the best at selling widgets. Um, but it's much better than them going to your site. They might happen upon your site and then they have to search for it. And we all know that people, um, if they can't find exactly what they're looking for in the you know, first couple of seconds that they're on the site, they're gonna bounce to another site to find what they're looking for. So the Google ad option allows you to put them directly where you want them to be. Um, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about is uh, paid social media and retargeting. So I don't want to get that confused with um, the organic that Beth was talking about, but this works very similarly, similar to Google ads in that um, you can pay to boost a post, you can sponsor ads, you can have, you know, regular advertising, but it is, you get to um, uh, pick your audience and pick your daily budget. And then again, you only have to pay for it if someone actually clicks on it. Um, as you can imagine, there are thousands of data points that you can create an audience on. Um, that's just the nature of your digital footprint nowadays. Um, someone knows Facebook in particular knows exactly um, what you like, what you don't like, uh, where you spend your time, what things you click on, what uh, videos you watch, how long you watch them, if you have a dog, if you have a child. Uh, so they know pretty much everything about you. And so an advertiser can really narrow into a very specific audience um, and can uh, put uh, ads and sponsored posts in that person's news feed. They don't even have to like you. They don't have to follow you. They don't have to like you, but it's a pay to play and you get into their news feed, whether or not they um, like you or not. Um, so the other thing that we can talk about when we talk about paid social media is retargeting. Sometimes this is called remarketing. Um, so those are the same things if you hear them used um, interchangeably. Um, I'm going to give an example of remarketing because I think it's the easiest way to do it. Um, say that you want to go on Kelly Blue Book and figure out, you know, how much your car is worth. Maybe it's five years old, maybe it's 10 years old, doesn't matter. You put that information in, you might have to put your email address in to figure out, um, to get the information back. Um, and then coincidentally, the next day you go on Facebook and uh, that car is being advertised, the newer version, the newest version of that car is being advertised directly to you. And you think, how does Facebook know that? Um, that's remarketing and retargeting. So they know you're either in the market to sell a car or buy a car. And they know that there's an opportunity to advertise to you that um, you know, if you're selling a car, then you're going to be looking for a car. And if you're buying a car, then that's the same thing. Um, so remarketing is an opportunity to retarget and remarket to someone that you've already engaged with. Um, so social media platforms will allow you to upload a list of email addresses and everybody on social has to have an email address in order to have a social account. So, uh, LinkedIn or Facebook, they will compare that list to their users and then you can target that particular user with a very personalized offer um, or a sale or something that is very personalized. It's very segmented specifically for them. They might need not be ready to buy today, but they've now interacted with you on several occasions. They've seen you on social. They've received an email from you. They may have been to your website because their website is tracking you. Um, so when you are ready to buy, you'll think of them first, or you know, you'll think of them before you go to Google and start just searching for things. Um, so it's an opportunity to really get in front of an audience and keep your message fresh to them, keep it out there in front of them, and then when they are ready to buy, they are going to think of you. Um, is there any questions about retargeting or social media? Obviously, none of this is 
free. So these are all paid. Um, and we always recommend that if you are going to do paid media that to not neglect your organic meat, your organic social. It's still important to post regularly on organic posts um, because that does give you an opportunity to interact with your customers or people who are interested in you. Uh, if people are commenting, we always suggest that you comment back to them, show them that you are engaged with them, that you're authentic, that you, um, you value them as a person, as a, as a customer. So make sure that if you are doing paid that you're also doing organic. Um, so that's really important. Uh, and the, the second thing that's really important with paid media is that you really understand your audience. You don't want to waste spend on targeting people that aren't really your customers. So it's really important to know who those people are, what they like, what they're looking for, how you can um, post content that's relevant to them uh, so that you're not wasting spin. Um, before I go on to SEO, I know that there, oh, Beth answered it already. Somebody asked, what's an organic post? And that's anything that you don't pay for. That's when you go either on to Hootsuite or Buffer, or you go directly to Facebook and post something um, without paying for it. So it's anytime, so it's just like yourself, your individual uh, profiles, when you go and you just post something. Um, it's anytime that you don't pay for something. Um, so I'm going to move on to SEO. <laughs> there's a, uh, there's probably a whole session alone on SEO here. Um, so I'm just going to, uh, hit on a couple of the, the, uh, key points. Beth already talked to you a little bit about on page SEO. That's the stuff that people can see on your website. That's the copy, the content, the people, the words and the sentences that people actually read on your website. There are two other kinds of uh, SEO that are important to pay attention to. So that's on page. The other one is off page SEO. That is when people backlink to your site. Um, so for example, say a news article uh, writes about you and they link back to your site. So backlinks are really important because Google views that as you being someone of authority. It means that uh, someone trusts you to send people to your website. So backlinks are important, but it is also important to realize that backlinks, uh, not all backlinks are created equal. So if a bad site is just linking back to rate, you know, random websites or linking back to every page on your website, um, then Google views that as what they call link stuffing. So you don't want to do link stuffing because Google does not favor that very highly. Um, so good. So it's important to really seek out those good backlinks. Um, again, that could be a news article, that could be a trade association that might be mentioning you. There are you know vendor partners that you collaborate with a lot. Um, so anytime that you can get a good backlink from another trusted source is a really good opportunity for you um, in Google's eyes that just elevates your SEO. The one thing is that you really have no control over that. So, um, you know, obviously it's good to ask and then you can also trade. Say if you link back to me, I'll link back to you and you can scratch each other's backs. Um, for the ones that are just linking back to you without permission, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of control you have over that. You can ask them to do to take it off, but the likelihood of that happening probably isn't high, but you can try. Um, so that is off page SEO. So that's anything that takes place off of your website um, and linking back to it. The third kind of SEO is technical SEO. And I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on that, but there are a couple of things that you can do for on the technical side of your website that will significantly improve your SEO. Um, this is the stuff that people can't see. So it's on the back end of your website. It's when you create pages um, before it's published and you can edit them at any time, but it's the stuff that people can't see. Um, it's the behind the scenes. It's the headings that you're using on your uh, pages. It's the page titles that you're seeing at the top of your the website page that you're um, in the browser window. It is uh, meta descriptions. They're called meta descriptions in your creation page, your meta tags. Um, 
alternate image tags. So anytime you upload an image, there's usually an opportunity to create an alt image tag. Um, and that's for uh, usability, people who can't, who are blind and are like read, you know, they're, they're getting their website through audio. Um, so anytime that you're making it very user friendly, you're adding on that stuff, Google sees that as being a very strong site structure. Uh, you're doing things the right way. So those are really important. A couple of other things are site speed. People don't like to wait. So if you have a, a slow site speed, um, Google doesn't favor that very highly. They're going to pass over you to another site that loads more quickly. Broken links on your website, that's really low hanging fruit that you can grab right away. Um, you shouldn't have any broken links on your website. Broken links are just ones that you click on it and it doesn't go anywhere or it goes to a bad page. So um, you can usually check that out pretty quickly and uh, fix those broken links right away. Uh, the other thing is making sure that it's mobile friendly. Um, so mobile friendly, you know, we all know that people are looking at things on their uh, phones and iPads a lot more frequently. So making sure it's mobile friendly, Google recognizes that sites that are mobile friendly, they adopt to both uh, mobile and desktop. And then um, not having duplicate content on your site is really important too. Um, anytime you might have, you might have to have duplicate content, but at some point it's, it's important to change the words a little bit and make sure that it is not an exact cut and paste because uh, Google doesn't like that. And that goes um, the same for meta descriptions and uh, page titles and things like that on your website. So you want to make sure that all of those things are completely in sync with the content that's on the page, uh, because that will help you rank for those keywords because uh, Google looks at all three of those things. So on page SEO, off page SEO and technical SEO and the way that you show up to the top is um, a combination of those things done together. Um, not, you know, SEO is definitely not something that's one and done. Um, it's not uh, something that you can do quickly. We usually recommend that it takes about three to six months to fully realize all of the SEO improvements that you've been making. Um, and also with the changes in algorithms, just like the social platforms, Google changes their algorithms sometimes. So if you see something slide, if you're looking at your Google Analytics and you see something slide, um, it might be time to just uh, look at your, your back end, look at the website, see if there's any, been any changes, see if there's you know, a broken link for some reason or another. Um, so it's an opportunity to do that. I know SEO is free, but it does take time and time is a resource. So, um, but there is lots of low hanging fruit that you can uh, definitely tackle and improve your SEO results. The bottom line is that you want your site to come up at the top um, without having to pay for it. So the, the better your SEO, the better your uh, site structure, the higher up in search results you'll get. So that's getting free, free people to your website as opposed to paying with Google Ads to get to people to your website. Um, the other thing, the final thing I'm going to talk about is digital advertising. And I'll just touch on this really quickly. I know I'm going through this fast and have a lot of information, but um, it's not to be confused with social advertising. Digital advertising is also known as display advertising. And it is um, what you would most compare it to traditional advertising, um, but it's on a digital platform. So, um, You'll see this at the top of us websites as banner ads. You'll see it along the sides as skyscraper ads. Um, I, the, my most recent memory that I worked with the I, IBJ. So the IBJ does a lot of digital advertising on their website with uh, display ads. They do it in their emails. So if you get their, their daily digest or their, their weekly digest, you'll see a lot of display advertising in their emails. Um, Trade, trade associations do this a lot still, especially with their digital versions of their magazines. A lot of trade associations still do actual physical magazines, um, but they also do a lot of digital versions. So trade associations do this a lot as well. Um, depending on how sophisticated that platform, the ad platform is, uh, you can figure out you know, how many impressions you're gonna get, which is how many times it's popped up so someone sees it. And then, um, then, 
uh, you can also add tracking links to find out, you know, when it does drive someone back to your website, you can understand exactly what ad did it and uh, how to track that. So you can really tell who's coming to your website and who clicked on that ad. Um, so again, digital advertising is one of those things that we always recommend that you really understand your advert, your um, audience, because um, you want to play in the same sandbox as your customer is. Uh, so you really need to understand like what they're reading, you know, how they're spending their time getting their information. Um, and you want to have a, a really coordinated approach for how you're using that, that information for digital advertising. Um, so I went through those things very quickly. Um, there are a couple of questions I see that we can address here at the end. I want to make sure we touch to Matt um, first, and he's going to talk a little bit more about websites. Um, and then we'll, we'll hit those questions at the end, just so we can get through this presentation. But um, Matt, I'll turn it over to you now. Yeah, I think, um, Amanda, while we're on this section, do you think you can answer Carly's question there real quick about how within you know, the multiple ads that pop up at the top of a Google search, who gets to be that first ad versus second ad or third ad? Sure. Um, so basically you bid on how much you're willing to pay. Um, so the people who are, you know, say you have, there are multiple ads, it means that that person who's at the very top, they agreed to pay the most money. Um, so when you set up your ad buys, you decide this is how much I'm willing to pay per day per click and then um, in there and Google will actually tell you how much a specific term is worth because they know how many people are bidding on it they know how many people are clicking on it so Google can tell you how much a term is worth um, and so then people get to bid on it and if you bid higher than anybody else does then that's how your ad gets to the top of that it's like a silent auction kind of yeah All right, if we go to the next slide here. So, you know, we've only got, uh, if we had a hard stop here at one, we've got a few minutes, so it's a, gonna be a very big overview. But the most important thing, like Beth said, about your website is that your primary call to action and what you do, the problem that you solve for your audience, that that is in the area that we call above the fold. So this needs to be in that sort of hero banner section so that when somebody gets there and quickly scans over the biggest text on the page and the most prominent button on the page that they can quickly assess, you know, does this person solve my problem and can I quickly, you know, get in touch with them or like know what the next step should be. So Carvana has a great example of that. They say the new way to buy a car and then they list out the three steps buy online, get it delivered, love it or return. And so they answer the whole process for you right there. And then they have their search bar directly below that so that you can get started right away with looking for that car that you want. And then they also, you know, you might say, well, that's Carvana does more than that. Well, still above the fold, they let you know that you can buy a car or you can sell or trade a car. And then another roadblock to buying is financing. How am I gonna pay for it? And they make sure that you quickly know if that's what you're looking for and scanning for it, you can find it and access it before you even have to start scrolling down their website to find out more information. And then if you're still not sure that Carvana is somebody that you should trust or somebody that you should do business with, they also clearly tell you a, a second time on the hero banner that they have a seven day return policy. So in this one section of the homepage, the first place that people land, most of that hero's journey, most of those steps in the brand script are immediately being addressed so that somebody can quickly assess whether or not this is where they wanna go and buy a car. That's super important to do on the top part of your website. If we go to the next slide, there's just a few statistics on people's website behaviors. So, you know, the average attention span in general has dropped from 20 seconds to eight seconds. So you know, imagine that you are the audience traveling to your website, set a timer, open up your homepage and count the time that it loads, count the time that you look and see everything that's on that top section before you started scrolling, 
could you explain your business or what you do and how you solve that person's problem? Could you understand it in less than eight seconds? So that's where that site speed that Amanda talked about is also very important. If your website takes four seconds to load, you've lost half the time of somebody being able to take in your information at the top. Then it says the average time on a website is less than 10 to 15 seconds. So again, kind of sticking to the attention span on a website, maybe you get a two second buffer there in that 10 to 15 for somebody to let your site load. So that's gonna be very important. And then it says a user will only read 28% of the text on a website before leaving. Most of that's gonna be in that section before you start scrolling. So it's very important. You know, I try to compare it to the dust cover on you know, a hardcover book in a, in a brick and mortar bookstore. If you can't understand what sort of story is being told from the front of that dust jacket before you even pick it up, then you're gonna walk right past it. And it's the same thing with your website. It needs to be very clear from the top. So I think those are the most important things when it comes to website. The next slide that we have, um, yeah, it's just uh, thanking you. So, you know, we could always talk about all the different platforms, like what platform should your website be on and, and things of that nature. Um, we do have the opportunity for like individual consultation sessions. So if you have questions about any of what was presented today, or if you have questions specifically about websites, since we had to, you know, kind of go through that quickly, uh, feel free to reach out to us and we can spend some more time talking through your uh, unique problem or pain point that you're going through. Yeah, and I know I want to be mindful of everyone's time today. So um, if you have to jump off, please feel free to do that. Um, but we can stay on with you and, and answer questions that we didn't get to, if you'd like. Um, Lexi or, or Diane, I don't know if you want to speak now. It's nice seeing everyone. Thank you, Matt and Amanda and Beth um, for, you know, giving us an overview. I know there's a lot of um, marketing options for folks. And so we touched uh, on a lot of points today. And um, I did put in the chat, uh, please, if you want to even type now, if there's specific things that you want um, us to dive deeper, uh, we'd be happy to do that. You know, we can even uh, see if Amanda, Beth, or Matt are available to jump on. I know um, in the future to, you know, dive a little deeper. Today was very much an overview. We do encourage you all to reach out to them for that complimentary consultation if you would like to do that. Um, uh, you know, they can dive deeper individually with you. But I know this is a common thread. You know, people are trying, of course, to get noticed. Whether you're a for-profit or a non-profit organization, um, people have to know who you are. And in order to, you know, connect with you for your products, services, or to become a nonprofit donor or volunteer, um, having that presence and being able to tell your story. What is your mission, whether it's a for-profit or nonprofit? How can you solve people's um, issues? Uh, you know, it's all about the person that's, um, you know, looking at your website more than just us saying about ourselves, but what can, what can we do for them? So I think there were great takeaways. I think there's a lot of opportunities to dive deeper. I'm sorry I was a little late joining on. For some reason, I was having server issues and I could uh, not get on right away this morning, but got that all figured out. And, um, you know, really, we're here to connect you with resources and we have great chamber members to help you. You know, one of the things in my conversation with folks is they're limited on time. You know, resource, time is a resource, a very, uh, you know, valuable resource. So um, just like today, uh, really utilizing the experts that we have um, that are chamber members and members of our community, um, they're here to help us and, you know, they can work with, with you with your individual needs. And, um, you know, we want to really, this is a time that everybody is really looking at, you know, how can I be better post COVID-19 than I was prior. And so we appreciate, um, you know, and marketing coming on today. You know, we as a chamber want to equip all of you um, to pave a pathway to really successfully rebound from COVID-19. And this is an opportunity to really put these items into practice um, 
So when business, you know, business is still going on now, just people are having to pivot and do that differently. So it's a good way to showcase currently what you're doing. And then when, you know, everything's been uplifted here in the near future, hopefully, um, then we can, you know, open up for business even stronger. So, you know, as I've said before, being able to connect our chamber members with community members and with each other is how we're going to be stronger, you know, post COVID-19. So thank you all for attending. I know, let's see, we have a couple of chat things. Feel free to unmute and ask questions. Uh, as Amanda said, you know, they'll stay on here for a few minutes and answer any um, questions that you have. Uh, Amanda, I think there's a lot of thank yous. I think Carly, yeah, do you I see Carly's I, question, if you yeah, want to address that? that. I'll, I'll be happy to address that uh, since I talked about the above the fold. That's a great question, Carly. Like, can I fit the whole hero's journey in the above the fold section? It is a big ask and it, it does vary by industry or maybe even the complexity of services that you offer. That's where the brand script that we talked about is going to be really important beforehand knowing that external, internal, and philosophical problem and figuring out the most concise and clear way to establish that you know that problem and you have a solution to that problem, I would say that's the biggest thing that you need. Because imagine being in the, in the position of your audience. When they come to the website, the first thing they want to know is, does this website, you know, does this business know my problem? And, you know, do they offer a solution? So I think the two big things is establishing that problem and solution in the above the fold section on that hero banner area, you know, where you have a big background image and big text on the front. That's going to be very helpful. And then a clear way to take that next step. So a lot of times in the top right hand corner of the navigation bar, that's where we want to look and see, do you have a button there, something that's very clearly clickable that's you know your primary call to action, whether that's to buy, whether that's to contact you or schedule an appointment. If you get those two things up into the top of the site so that somebody could quickly within eight seconds see that you know their problem and that you have a solution and then it's easy to get in touch with you, that's gonna really help the performance of your website as far as audience engagement when they get there. What are your thoughts on being able to market yourself both now because we're we're transitioning currently so we're making changes and we're a virtual credit union at this time you know you can't come in and see us so we're offering solutions for people to be able to kind of do things that they would traditionally do coming into a branch so i feel like we're we're targeting more on that is that something that we should just continue to adapt and change over time as things kind of go back to, well, not back to normal, but go to like what the new normal is going to be then and keep that whole website updated as well? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think a lot of times it's easy to imagine building a website because it is such a monumental task and it feels like a lot to do. It's very easy to imagine once you've built it, you're done. But like Amanda said, there's a lot of upkeep and maintenance that goes into, you know, um, building a website. You know, I would say it's the equivalent of building or, or buying a home. You know, it's, you don't just get it and then it never has a problem or issue or maintenance or things that need to be taken care of. I think, you know, periodically you have to be checking that and saying, are we still speaking to the correct problem? Because your audience is going to potentially change and adapt. So you use the example of, you know, COVID-19, that's a great example. People's banking needs have changed. They can't come in anymore. They can't take advantage of that. And so I think making it very clear that you recognize that that's uh, a hurdle or an obstacle to them keeping control over their finances or feeling a sense of security because they can look at their finances or, you know, adjust or adapt to the changing uh, financial, uh, you know, situation, that's going to show, oh, okay, these people know that there's a pandemic going on too, and that they are equipped to help me in the midst of that. And that's going to provide a sense of comfort and say, this is somebody I want to move forward with versus somebody who's not talking about it at all above the fold.
Does anybody else have any other questions? Or Amanda, Matt, you know, or Beth, or do you guys have anything additional that you want to add? Um, no, I don't think so. Just we really appreciate the opportunity to talk to everyone today. And as Matt mentioned, uh, we are um, we can offer an individual consultation session. There's no strings attached. Um, you know, just feel free to fill out the form, the contact us form, or you can email me directly at amanda.cook at and-marketing.com. Um, and we also have some small business offerings that um, are some uh, offers a, a free analysis of your website and social media so that we can provide you with some guidance on how you could make some improvements to that. So if anyone's interested in that, please feel free to go to that page. Um, we'll also share a sample content calendar that Beth mentioned to help you plan out your content um, because we know that content's the cornerstone of about every, every one of these other tactics that we talked about today. So um, if content is king, then digital is queen. So the two work hand in hand. Um, so you will get all of that um, post webinar along with this presentation as well. So if you have any questions, uh, our contact information is there. So please feel free to reach out to us and thank you for allowing us to share with all of you today. Thank you so much. Um, again, I know there are uh, quite a few comments, you know, and chats. Um, so besides the recording we do have, I put on there, there is a Boone County Chamber YouTube channel. So we have uploaded um, all of our previous webinars and today's webinar will be on there also because I know um, a lot of people want to go back and or share with their team, you know, this is a good time to, to bring your teams together and um, you guys can you utilize the information and try to have a, a plan in place. You know, this is a great time to get that marketing plan in place and um, utilize the experts that we have with and marketing to help you uh, with really carrying those out. So reach out to us at any time um, at the chamber. That's what we're here for. You know, we definitely are not the experts in the fields uh, that uh, our great members are. But we are so happy that, you know, we can provide that connection um, to help everyone, you know, to be access successful as they can be. Alexi, do you have anything else? No, you did an overview for, for Wednesdays? No, I couldn't actually access it, so I did not get to talk about Wednesday's webinar. So, so we will have a, um, you know, typically we are having webinars every Wednesday and Friday, and you know those topics vary um, sometimes, you know, relevant on what's happening in, you know, kind of the current status of COVID nineteen. Um, we're looking forward to hearing what the governor says later this afternoon, uh, and hope that you know we'll get an update on what um, the month of May looks like uh, we don't know what that is um, so we may be providing continued um, items for you all uh, even some different marketing um, kind of items as, as you continue to work on that and it may be some updates that you need to be aware of based on what the governor says today so we will market those via email. If you haven't, if you're not on our email list and want to be on our email list, we'd love to have you. Um, just uh, contact us and send us an email or give us a call at the chamber. Um, it's the first initial of our first name and then our last name. So that's L. Britt and D. Schultz at boonchamber.org and we'll get you on um, that email list. That's the best way uh, for us to be able to communicate with you as well as our social media. So Lexi does a great um, job with all that, but I know I saw her taking notes. So I'm excited to see uh, how she'll utilize all the information um, in her role with the chamber on, on what she learned today also. So thank you on a personal um, item with that uh, and marketing team, as well as uh, working with um, other members. We're lucky to have you as a member with the chamber. Have a great Friday. You too, thank you. All right, we hope to see everyone in person soon, but uh, virtually if we need to. Have a good day.